Good morning. Welcome back to DDL's Pack Review. For those of you that are new and haven't seen our previously released pack review videos, we do a, uh, a video series dedicated directly to the test standards and some of the problems that our customers are facing within the industry. Uh, my name is Scott Levy and I'm a 21-year veteran that works with medical device organizations to help them bring their package and products to market. I'm also joined today by Pete Johnson. Uh, Pete is also a 15-year veteran that also works with medical device companies. We're both very well versed with medical device standards and ISO 11607. Welcome, Pete. Thanks, Ed. Today we're going to talk a little bit about distribution simulation testing and primarily with ASTM D4169. ASTM D4169 is probably the most prevalent and widely used distribution test standard uh, that the industry, medical device, and other industries use on a daily basis. Uh, recently, uh, the D4169 has been updated from revision 14 to revision 16, which is causing uh, quite the controversy out within the industry and our customers, and we thought we'd bring a video to explain some of the main details between the two standards and try to give you a little bit more insight. Uh, with regards to the change in standard, it's primarily with Schedule E random vibration. Uh, with revision 14 versus 16, let's talk about 14 first. Uh, revision 14 simply had you working off assurance levels. What's an insurance level? An assurance level is simply the overall intensity level that you're going to subject your packages to while undergoing vibration. Now between the two standards, the 14 and 16, the only major revision was with Schedule E random vibration. Why did they make this change? Well, the primary reason is the data that we had for revision 14 was pretty outdated. So what does that mean? It means that if you have used these procedures in the past, you might have been over testing your package. Why is that uh, important? Well, if you're only doing distribution simulation once and you're testing at an extremely high threshold and you're seeing consistent failures that you're not seeing in the real world, well, what does that mean? And based upon the actual vibratory characterization and the data, uh, the D4169-16 was updated to give a little bit more clear and concise uh, vibratory profiles to better mimic of what's truly going on within the industry and what happens with your package. So Pete, tell me a little bit of the differences, the main difference between uh, 2014 versus 2016 and Schedule E truck spec and vibration. Well, let's start with 2014. That The truck vibration profile and that was done at a static assurance level. Assurance level one, two, and three. Um, the the assurance level one was a higher intensity, obviously most aggressive. That was done at a 0.73 GRMS. Assurance level two, uh, slightly less aggressive, was done at a 0.52 GRMS, and assurance level three a 0.32 GRMS. But it was it was a static. It stayed at that assurance level for the entire duration. Jumping over to 2016 there's quite significant changes between the 2014 version and the 2016 version. Um, one with the profile itself, um, the intensity levels, and the durations at which you run those intensity levels. But the beauty about it is that the 2016 version has taken everything and kind of combined it together into you know, one truck vibration profile. For example, um, let's take a 60 minute truck vibration profile, um, for example, and uh, so the different intensity levels are, are kind of, I'll summarize them as high, medium, and low. Um, low being about 0.4 GRMS, medium being about 0.52 GRMS, and high being about 0.7 GRMS. And what that is to represent low being 90% of most of your vibration will occur at that level or below. 90, medium would be 95% of that vibration level or below. And high would be 99% of those vibration levels or below. Now the higher vibrations don't occur all that as frequent as the low vibrations. So the standard has uh, truncated the vibration profile and accounted for those durations for you. So going off an example of 60 minutes for a truck vibration profile, um, 40 minutes of those would be done at your low intensity, 15 minutes would be done at your medium intensity, 
in five minutes would be done at your high intensity. So Pete, based upon these changes, uh, what it looks to me like is it's an all-encompassing uh, vibratory profile that incorporates uh, essentially what was done in 14 insurance level one, two, and three under one specific profile because we understand that based upon the new data, the new field data uh, th that, they've, that they've supplied regarding the actual vibratory characteristics in the field, you see multiple different frequencies. You just don't see one static frequency that was currently done in the past. Correct. So with regards to your clients and my clients, I'm, I've, a lot of questions have been asked on me. What type of typical questions have you uh, fielded from your clients? Well, you know, the concern is, you know, which, which version do I go with? Um, you know, a lot of our, my customers have been using um, the previous vibration profiles since, you know, for a long time anyway. Um, and with the significant change, you know, their comfort level may not be quite there as to make that make that jump because um, it, it appears that you know you are going to be running at lower intensity levels and yep. is and is you know higher intensity levels always better well it's uh, sometimes uh, it's that's a risk assessment I guess they're going to have to make I always try and move people towards the latest and greatest version um, it's it's going to be best representative of uh, you know, actual field conditions. Absolutely. Um, you know, ideally, if you, you know, ideally, if you can, if you're able to map your distribution lanes, that's going to be the most accurate. Um, that's not always feasible for my clients, so they rely on these published standards um, to get the closest representation that they can. And um, so, I, I'm trying to persuade and move people over to the 2016. Because it's it's most representative in the field, I, I don't think there'd be any issues. Yeah, I pretty much feel in the same type of questions as uh, the organizations have been executing uh, the test methodologies for so long. Their comfort level within that methodology has been entrenched, and typically, from my years of experience, when something changes within a standard, it causes a lot of uh, angst with how do we move from this standard to this standard? How do we write a justification? Do we need to write a justification? But I think the key with any, any new standard, especially this standard, is it's representative to what your samples are gonna see. And you know, 90, 95% of failures are a direct, a direct result of performance testing or distribution simulation testing. So subjecting your samples to a higher assurance level, like in revision 14 for a 60 minute period, you're potentially opening yourself up for catastrophic problems that you may not see in the real world. And I think that's what I try to express the most. When you're doing distribution simulation testing, you're really just taking a snapshot picture. You're just taking a snapshot picture to ensure that you're not, uh, that you limit the potential issues that you're gonna have in the field. So going with the real world data is where I definitely been pushing uh, our, our, my customers for sure, based upon that real world data. But you know, it, it comes down to risk analysis internal risk analysis. And if you're comfortable with moving forward to the most of our relief standards, which I am, and you know, the FDA consensus standards, et cetera, you know, that's the direction that you'd want to move towards. That's probably been the main question, primarily, is how do I move from this to this? Right. But the realistic aspect, I think, is really what sells this. Uh, the real world data, it's concrete data, and it's, it's really interesting data. If you get a chance, go out to ASTM and actually take a look at the data that they've captured. It's very interesting. I want to thank you uh, for tuning in to uh, transportation simulation testing and this episode of PAC Review. If you should have any questions about this standard or any, any other standards uh, that we've previously done PAC Review videos on, uh, please visit us at our website at www.testedandproven.com. Thanks for signing in.